Hello and welcome to Prep for Retirement Television. I'm Cheryl Tan, your host. Each week I'm joined by local financial advisor Patrick Moriarty to discuss three important aspects of retirement planning. Over the past 30 years, Patrick has worked for some of the largest financial firms in the industry. Six years ago, he started his own financial firm that has a focus on helping viewers like you prep for retirement. He's here today to share his ideas and strategies to help you live a long and happy retirement. Patrick, welcome. Thank you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you as well. And we're excited to talk about these really important issues today. So retirement planning takes a little bit more than luck. Each week, we're going to be focusing on three financial topics or leaves, like in the shamrock of your company's logo, to help our audience prep for retirement. You often talk about the three phases of retirement planning. Can you talk about those phases and explain them to us? Sure. You know, when I meet with new clients or when I meet with the viewers, they often think that retirement is just this one huge phase, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And it could be couldn't be further from the truth. Um, it's sort of like going to school. We don't go to school in you know, one grade for 12 years or 16 years. It's broken up. We have you know, junior high school, high school, college, and we're at different ages during those different segments of education. We're learning different things, different subjects, different needs. And planning for retirement is exactly the same. It has three different phases. There's the accumulation phase, the distribution phase, and then finally the preservation phase. So it's important to know that they're all different. We have different needs. We're at different ages during those phases. And I think the better the viewer and the client understands that, I think the better they can be prepared. I think for some folks, as you have mentioned, that they think that it is one giant period of time. Correct. But there's a start and a stop. Correct. So as you've mentioned the three phases, can you really describe sure. what it looks like for people in each of these segments? Definitely. Let's start with the accumulation phase. And that's when, you know, we're younger. We're just starting out in our professional career. We might have our first job. Uh, we sign up for our first 401k plan. Uh, the company matches. Uh, we're plowing money into that every month. You know, it comes out pre-tax dollars. And you know, we're being aggressive with this money. We're younger. We want this money to grow over our, you know, 30 or 40 years of working. Sometimes we don't even open the monthly statements. You know, we really don't care what it's doing. We don't care if the market's up. We don't care if it's down. When it's down, we're just buying more. And it's just all about putting your nose to the grindstone and just trying to accumulate as much wealth as possible. As we get closer to retirement, let's say two or three years away from retirement, we enter into what I like to call the distribution phase. And this is when we're older, uh, maybe we're in our late 50s, early 60s, and now we have to start thinking about making this money last as long as we do. It then becomes an, a game about income and not so much accumulation or building up wealth. And so in the distribution phase, we want to make sure that these assets last as long as we do. We, we need to turn these, this, these assets into income. And that's the difference between the accumulation phase and the distribution phase. And then finally, the preservation phase. This is when we're later in life. I, I like to say that we're kind of near the end of our shelf life, right? You know, the end of retirement. And we still have a pool of money that we've uh, been able to save and accumulate. And now we want to pass this on to our heirs, right? We want to give it to our children and grandchildren. We've worked really hard for it. And we want to do this as efficiently as, as possible. We want to you know, make sure that it goes easily without taxes and fees. So I always make sure that my clients have a will, um, that they have power of attorneys, that they have medical directives, that they have trusts. And you know, I'm not an attorney, so I, don't, I can't give that advice, but I make sure that they have those things in place later in life. So those are the three phases. They're completely different, but it's important to know the significance of all three and I spend all of my time in those final last two stages, the um, distribution and preservation phase. I think as, you, as people are hearing some of the things you're talking about, they're thinking, oh no, uh, I need some of those things. I have not heard about those things before. Exactly. I also know that you're a big football fan. Yes. How would you compare that to football? Well, that's, that's a great question. I, I love sports. Uh, I love football. I love sports analogies when I talk to my clients. And so I think this is a perfect sports analogy comparing retirement planning with a football game. And if you're familiar with football and even 
soccer as well, there's a first half and there's a second half. And in between is, is, is halftime. And that's a meeting where you know, the coaches get together, some of the key players get together, and they come up with a strategy to win that football game. So whether they're losing at halftime or they're winning at halftime, they've got to come up with a good plan. Everybody wants to win their football game. And, you know, retirement is very similar. When we transition from the accumulation phase to the distribution phase, you know, we have to sit down and have a meeting because they're totally different plans and they're, and they're totally different um, periods of time. So we need to sit down, have a meeting, and put together a plan and a strategy to win at retirement because, you know, face it, retirement's way more important than a football game. Yeah. I think people who like football really can see <laughs> that end game, if yes. you will. Talk about that halftime meeting a little sure. bit more, the importance of that, and what really that looks like as sure. someone has that 20,000-foot view of what's happening with their finances. Definitely. Um, so that, that meeting is, is really just a fact-finding meeting. It's, it's fact-finding for the client and the viewer when they sit down and meet with me because they're gonna find out all about me in my business and, and how I work with my clients. So it's important that they know who I am. And then it's important for me to sit down and, and really understand the client, understand the viewer. What, what are their goals? What are their dreams? What do they want retirement to look like? We start talking about the inputs. You know, what have they accumulated? What does their social security look like? Do they have a pension? Um, you know, we, we look at all the variables and then we try to put together a plan that lasts as long as they do. Very good. If people have questions, if they want sure. to learn more about your halftime meeting sure. or anything that leads up to halftime right. or afterward, where can they go to reach out to you? Well, they can just give us a call. Uh, or call us directly at 410-599-3300. And they, there's people there that can answer the phone, set an appointment, and find a time where we can sit down and have a discussion about what your plan looks like.